Hello and welcome to the video game book club. We're back. This month we read a, two comics. But Both Horizon Zero Dawn comics. They, well, I mean, they kind of go together. Yeah, they do. I mean, they're not really connected other than the world. And they're pretty short. There are uh, one and two of the series. Yeah, I don't think there's any more than that as of now. I don't think there is either. I think yeah. it's just the two. Just the two. There's the Sunhawk and Liberation. Probably going to talk about Liberation first because that one has the least amount of spoilers for the game. And chronologically, uh, Liberation takes place during Horizon Zero Dawn and Sunhawk takes place after the game Horizon Zero Dawn. So, so uh, let's read the backs. All right. So we have Horizon Zero Dawn Liberation. So the um, people, uh, Anne Tool, who also wrote some of the side quests, um, she writes for this. Elmer Damaso, Brian Valencia, and Jim Campbell. So we have some artists um, as well as storytellers. Our world's next big adventure, epic adventure in the world of Horizon Zero Dawn. Discover the world of lush natural beauty remade after a global catechism. Catechism. Cataclysm? I can read. Yeah. <laughs> Massive animal-like machines rule as the dominant species while humans live in pre-industrial tribes. Fighting for the survival. Set during the events of Horizon Zero Dawn game, Aloy joins her friend Aaron. Everyone's friend, because he was friend-zoned. <laughs> On the hunt for a dangerous associate of his beloved sister's murderer. Well, that's kind of a spoiler. You haven't played the game, but... Along the way, Aaron narrates the sweeping tale of the liberation of Meridian, revealing how his sister prevailed against all odds, only to earn the wrath of one of the most brilliant and vengeful warriors of the Osirum tribe. So that is Liberation. That's actually the second comic in the series, but that takes place during the game. Yeah. So um, if you're reading chronologically, weirdly <laughs> enough, read number two first and yeah. then go back and read number one. So uh, for Horizon Zero Dawn, the Sunhawk, again, we have Anne Toole, we have Anne Molina, Brian Valencia, and Jim Campbell as our writers and artists. Um, again, we're returning to the world of Alloy and Horizon Zero Dawn. Uh, enter a post-apocalyptic future world where dangerous animal-like machines are dominant species and humans living in pre-industrial tribes must fight for survival. Well, that's weird because I've heard that before. In this edition, taking place after the events of the first Horizon Zero Dawn game, Alloy has disappeared and Hunter... We were supposed to look up how to say this name. Uh... Talona? Talana. That sounds right. T A L A N A. -H. You were the one who did her side quest. I did. I you did. should remember. It, it was too long ago. I, I think it's Talana. Uh, must take on a new mission. Along the way, Talana meets new allies and new enemies, and she soon discovers the whole new breed of deadly machines is loose upon the land. Dot, dot, dot. Can I say the on the cover of this one? Her headpiece is funny to me because it's being held up by her chin. Chin strap? She's got that in the game, though. <laughs> That's weird. Like, it's not like a neck strap. No, it's she's a got chin strap. So she must have like an intense a chin. Football player. They have those, like, chin to, strap. To, like, hold too. it up. But it's, like, necklace string. It's not. It's goofy. <laughs> it's a weird way to hold up a headpiece. Um, before we get into what these are actually about, um, just as a setup, it is, these are comics, um, they each have like, I think four chapters in it and the artwork in it, it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's good. I like it. Um, and then in between each chapter we have cover art, concept art. Yeah. I don't I think concept it. art. So they're very cool. Um, I would highly recommend checking them out cause they're a little bit of, um, looks like computer graphics versus actually like hand drawn yeah the first one has more hand drawn and then the second one has computer graphics which i'm pretty sure is just concept art but it's still pretty cool uh and then my favorites are done by peach momoko mm. they look super cool and shout out to all of those so mm -hmm. this these are canon well they're written by someone who actually wrote for parts of the game too yeah so. and one happens directly after the first game and one happens in the middle of the first game and they're very much uh, appropriate for their characters. I feel like dialogue and actions 
go with the characters. Um, they're both not about Aloy. Nope, she's just kind of in them. Um, you have Liberation is all about your boy. <laughs> How do you, is it Errand? Errand. Errand? Is there a D? Is it yeah, just there's Aaron? a D. Or is it Errand? It's Errand. Say Errand with a T. Errand. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, Talana is uh, the main character in um, the Sunhawks. Oh, I thought you were going to say in the game. Never mind. No, in the like in the, the comic, Hawk. the Sunhawk, she's the main character, and she's got a side quest that you can choose to do or not do. I recommend doing it, because she's helpful at the end of the game. So. I didn't have her at the end of the game, so I didn't know her very well, and when they were like, oh, she's there, she, she wasn't there for me. <laughs> but you gotta do, like, the, the lodge hunting things, which are very irritating. Time-consuming and boring for very, me. Very irritating. But... I digress. They're still really good comics, and I gave both of them five stars because I like them, and they actually got me excited to play Forbidden West. Forbidden West. Because one of them is actually talks about Forbidden West, the first one, Sunhawk. So I don't know. Maybe it has. Some, I didn't get far enough in Forbidden West to see if it. And I am not even matters. started. So. so, but we both played Horizon Zero Dawn. Mm-hmm. Um, it's one of the rare games that I actually 100%ed, so um, I I really enjoyed it. Um, I felt like these comics fit really well with the game, so if you're a fan of the game, I, you would enjoy reading it. Yeah, but read them after you finish the game. Yes, true story. You, you get more out of it, and it definitely has spoilers in it, so. And they're very short, so I, I, I mean, I think I read them both in like an hour, hour yeah. and a half, something like that. Something like that? Yeah. Are we ready to get, dive in? I feel like I wanted to say something else, but I completely forgot what it was, so yes. All right, so we are starting with actually the second comic in the series because it chronologically comes first. It is Liberation, and it is about your boy, Aaron. Aaron. Who got... <laughs> Everyone got friend-zoned by Aloy. Friend-zoned hard. Aloy doesn't want anything to do with anybody ever. <laughs> to be honest, he deserved it because he was, like, drunk the whole don't first hate on your boy Aaron that she met him and he was like one of the first people that was nice to her after that one dude that gave you clothes that is true which is honestly probably why she hangs out with him still <laughs> yes that's my theory because <laughs> he's kind of a bumbling oaf to be honest. yes very much so, so. He's like, I'll help you. And you're like, please don't. Like, I don't want to have to try to save you later. So I, I got this. See you just sit there. But out of all the dudes who honestly, that was like hitting on Aloy in that game, he probably was actually my favorite. So because <laughs> he's like a big goob. He was probably the one that it's probably the nicest for her because the other ones were kind of skeeving and mm. murderers. But, you know. I also kind of liked the Sun King, but that's a whole different thing. <laughs> anyway, let's get into this comic. So we are on a... Oh, I remember what I was going to say. Okay. Huh. Okay, so I really like these because my favorite part of Horizon Zero Dawn was the world that was current because it delved a lot into like what happened in the world in the past. And I don't care about that at all. <laughs> there are so if you haven't played the game, um, there's a lot of collectibles that um tell you about what has happened. There, it's a like a post-apocalyptic. The, everyone's kind of restarted. We have different tribes. Um, we'll read a little thing about the world of Horizon, but um, there's a lot of collectibles that give you backstory as to what was happening in the world during this crazy event and so the whole basic plot of that game is what happened to the world well horizon zero dawn that's it yes zero dawn is the um, the event that was the big restart so and i couldn't care less the whole time i was learning about the past future it was kind of like i don't i don't really care but when we were doing stuff like in the towns and the cities of the land currently i was more interested in what was going on politically in that climate so these comics i was really excited about and see i'm i'm a collector in games so those shiny things i always make us go back to collect and i read all the i the read all of them too and yeah. i didn't care even the flower you like you get these flowers and there's these weird poem code things which i've yeah. read them all um 
also if you played horizon and you have not when you see the apocalyptic shit show uh well i guess it would be his podcast right when you're looking at uh things from the past Mm, like the viewpointer things and that's what he calls them and he like has a little podcast that he does um if you go into those recordings there are more stories in there because he's basically writing letters to his mom um so you get like backstories on that character and i did not know that until i like got interrupted one time and i was like oh crap now i have to go back and re-listen to this thing and i was like what there's a whole other story here so that's just my if you haven't done that it's probably obvious to a whole lot of people but it was not obvious to me when i discovered it it was uh to me it was an interesting story but i digress uh the event that takes place involving this one liberation is my favorite entire quest line in this whole game it was the one that got me from going like i don't know if i want to play this game to like I'm interested now. <laughs> where he has to go find his sister? Yeah, where he has to go find his sister. I was really interested in that. And when that ended and it went back to being like, what happened to the world? I was like, oh, man. Then you got to go to the next city and then you're like, oh, let me solve all your problems. Now. Yeah, I, that's all I want to do. I want to run city to city and solve everyone's problems. That's not what Aloy wants to do. She wants to go off into the woods and ignore everybody. <laughs> well, understandably, but she's also... Trying to figure out her own stuff. Yeah, she's actually like, busy, but... Why are people trying to kill me? What did I do to them? Anyway, that's my two cents. This is why I gave this comic five stars, because it's my favorite part of Horizon, and I wish for more of that in Forbidden West, which I honestly probably won't get. It'll be all about the past future. Well, Call it the past future, because you, you know what I mean. Yes. It's the it's future. It's our future, but, but it's, it's their, their past. past. <laughs> I got you. I see it. Okay, cool. All right, so in the world of Horizon, so there's four words which um, sometimes are spoilers in games, like introductions, or games, sometimes spoilers in books are forwards and introductions, so typically you should read it first and then go back and read the forward, but I don't feel like this was particularly spoiling. Um, They're just, they talk about how much they love Aaron. Yeah, they really loved Aaron. fan favorite at Gorilla, so... um, kind of why I think they jumped into his character a little bit more to the his past. But then they give us this thing called the World of Horizon. Our story takes place a thousand years after a global cataclysm. You got it! I got it! Yay. I can speak. Uh, Earth has been remade into lush, thriving ecosystems, but with a new dominant species, the machines. These massive animal-like robots fill the lands, oceans, and skies, serving as the guardians and enforcers of the revived natural order. The, which is weird because machines are not natural, so that's... <laughs> No, okay, whatever. Uh, new generations of humans formed into pre-industrialized tribes without knowledge of the doomed civilization that preceded them, that the old ones, us. The story is set during the events of Horizon Zero Dawn. Aloy's search for answers led her to Meridian, where she helped Aaron bring Derval to justice for the death of his sister Ursa. Soon after, she learned fr- that the Eclipse cult had a base in the northern ruins of Maker's End, but just as she set out to find it, Aaron requested her aid yet again. That's Aloy, not her, his sister. Uh, an awesome traitor has been murdered near Pitchcliff, and Coral, an old associate of Derval's, was spotted near the scene. Aaron is determined to bring this dangerous fugitive to justice. So, as far as I know, this didn't happen in the game. Like, you didn't help Aaron find Coral. You go after Derval. You go after Derval. That's a big point. But you don't go after Coral. This is just a comic thing. But yeah, this is after... um, Because that's what they they say, actually, in the first forward of the Sunhawk. They talk about, we could have just made a comic of a of the game but no why would we do that when we can continue to tell more stories i mean you're playing the game why do you want to read about yeah, it that's true uh so they have gone into side stories of side characters which... are there comics that are just retellings of games because uh, yeah. i feel like comics are mostly just side stories about games like books that we read on these podcasts a lot of them are retellings of games mm-hmm. but yeah i'm sure there is i don't know i don't, I don't know i don't know of any because like, i mean the only other ones i've read are the mass effect ones and the life is strange ones and i think those are spinoffs 
Well, even Mirror's Edge is supposed to be like the in between, mm-hmm. the bridge between a good game and a bad game. <laughs> yeah. oh That's a story for Hot another tank. time. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> I think everyone knows. So Liberation, they are going to find Corval, and they do this back and forth where um, Aaron is telling the story about how his sister meets, uh, is it Avot? Avot? Yeah, I think it's Avod. Yes, the Sun King, the current Sun King. Avid. <laughs> A-B-A-D. It's been a while since I played this game. That's okay. Is it Aloy or Alloy? <laughs> Aloy. Aloy! That's why I always hear when people are like shouting at her, right? Yeah. Hey, Aloy! Well, it makes sense that Alloy is a metal, right? Mm-hmm. And that's what she's into. She's into like finding... <laughs> metal, dude. Super metal. So it is a back and forth. Uh, we get some backstory on the sun king was doing a bunch of sacrifices and everyone's like that sucks why are you doing that so there are people that decide to be rebels and attack him yeah this is a big big event that happened before aloy came in and people talk about all the time and and she doesn't know anything about it because again she was uh, (laughs) shunned outcast so she doesn't know the history they're like, you don't know about the Mad Sun King? And she's like, nah. <laughs> I was homeschooled. <laughs> the, this comic does a cool thing. So does the other comic. Where when they uh, go to like a backstory or like a memory, they like make it, put like a fuzzy filter over it for like the first couple of panels before it goes back to being sharp. Which is really, really cool to let you know that it is the past. Mm. <laughs> because sometimes in comics, it's hard to tell. Especially in this one where they're switching between the two all the time. Aaron's like, you don't want to hear the story. And Aloy's like, we have a long way to go. So you should tell me a story. Tell me about your sister. (laughs) It will uh, probably help you too. Yes. Get over this. dealing with some stuff. You seem pretty upset about Coral. So do you want to talk about it? (laughs) And then she's like, I really want to hear the story because Ursa is a badass. So she is like the best fighter of their tribe, and um, mm-hmm. she is smart, according to Aaron. But she's she uses strategy because she is the gets most that we know about her. Yeah, she's the, she is in the game for a very short time. It is a quest to go help him try to find his sister, uh, and out there, like him, her, and the king are lovers. Yep. And you can just see how they met in this comic. All right, so let's start with the plot. What's happening in here? So they, they're, the sun what king. are they called? Boot something? Oh, yeah. What are they called? They're like groupies. Oh, my God. They, so they are the resistance. They are small. Um, It's Derval and Erend. And there's like five of them, I think, all together. Um, Derval is Mr. Gadget. He's the one that makes bombs and... Uh, and a device that can summon machines and in this case they set up a trap because there's Osram prisoners being taken to be sacrificed and so they are trying to free them and Aaron is like I can do it and everyone's like no you can't you kind of you are the worst and so he is definitely a little brother and his sister has to look out for him she's like go take care of the prisoners and then she gets taken because... Free boosters. Is it boosters or boot? Oh, they're free booters. Free booters? Yeah. Free booters. Free booters. So they are... The free booters are freeing people and they're attacking in strategic places because there's only five of them, but they're trying to get other people to join them and that no one really wants to. So Ursa gets taken... Yeah, so she tells Aaron to go free the captives, and he does, and he just kind of runs away, uh, and she gets captured. The only one left. So he feels bad about it. Because it's his fault. And then, so she gets taken to the Sun King, and the Sun King's like, let's sacrifice her. And so when they sacrifice people in the game, they don't, like, actually just kill them. They put them in an arena for entertainment, and they have to fight uh, the machines. Mm -hmm. And they're like, well, if you're such a tough lady, you should be able to fight the machines without anything and so they don't give her anything to fight with and so she has to use her smarts yep and uh she does she takes a rock and tricks one of the machines to to like go over to where the guards are 
the, the bow and arrows yeah, that they, are like in case I don't know they leave or something. So she used she jumps onto the machine to jump up there to kill that guy and steal his weapons, and then she kills the machine and the other guy Archer. So she wins, but by winning you lose because now she's a slave and has to clean out the pig pens. Which she's like, fine. I'll do that because I'm going to wait and I'm going to watch and uh, then I'm going to escape. Yep. And that's where she, by waiting and watching, find out that the prince, Avad, is starting a kind of a coup. He's like, we need to talk to dad. He shouldn't be killing people. So he's got a brother, which I didn't know, but him and his brother are talking and then he's like, that's why you're the favorite. Um, and he's like, fine, I'll talk to him. He's got an older brother. And then... Um, Avad like helps Ursa like she's pulling weeds and her hands are all torn up and so he tears off his sleeve to show mm. some muscle because he usually doesn't have a shirt on anyways and to give her his sleeve for her wound yeah. uh, not just to show off he's not like walking up to her and being like hey babe and like stripping but the fact that he was wearing a shirt that day is amazing because he usually does not have a shirt on someone doesn't like the sun king I see <laughs> <laughs> yeah I did I I was like, no, bro, we're not romancing. Anyway. She's got things to do. She doesn't need a man to. Whatever about Sun King of Odd, all right? Listen, don't be a hater. <laughs> Sun King of Odd is fine. He also has things to do. He you doesn't have liked time for this. the crazy dude. I did. Who you, like, could choose to kill in that game. I did both. Listen, listeners. <laughs> there's, so, <laughs> there's a lot of dudes that like Aloy. There's this one guy who's like a bandit. Who's just, uh, ru- like around, and he's like insane, like Joker-y crazy dude, bit. and he, you but know, he you helped, can fight like, him, and he helps you take out he bandit helps you. camps, and he um, admires that you're fighting. The stuff. final thing you do with him is he's like, "All right, fight me," and you can choose to kill him or not because you can not, really, you can also just not show up. That's what really, like yeah. you don't have to do. He really wants to you to kill him because he admires you for your abilities. Yeah, to well, fight. he's crazy. And someone over here, but he's also I'm not pointing fingers. Very attractive. Uh, that's her favorite <laughs> guy. That is the, the boyfriend of... That's the boyfriend of that game. Mm-hmm. And honestly, probably the worst boyfriend <laughs> to pick for Aloy. So I don't want to hear anything about <laughs> Sun King of Bot. He's got his own problem. He's not a great choice, but he's not as bad as Bandit Boy. Anyway, rant over. Let's go back. So... Avad is helping, oh my god, what's her name? Ursa? Ursa is helping Ursa escape, basically. She And I like the thing of the escape. She's like, I'm going to wait till the sun's up so that it's it's blocking yeah. their vision so they can't see me. But she's like, but as soon as I get over the fence, they're going to notice I'm a slave and then they're going to kill me. Like, yeah, she's well, like, there's a there's a flaw in my strategy. And here, he's so like, she, I can give you a new outfit yeah. is basically what he does. Mm-hmm. So she go, follows through with her plan and she uh, escapes and heads back to her boot lickers group. <laughs> Freebooters. <laughs> Freebooters. And they're like, you <laughs> must have turned on us. And she's like, nah, bro. I know where all the peoples are going to be yeah, at. Yeah, let me so show you. They and- go and attack... The Karja. Mm-hmm. The, the was it like a montage of them attacking a bunch of Karja? Yes. Or was this, okay, it good. was that, and then they were like, every time they attack someone, they're like, hey, you want to join our crew? Oh, yeah. And slowly, then... Slowly getting a, a bigger band together. As they're waiting for a Karja group to show up, you see a, a familiar face, and where she's like, no, wait, a lot. And then Avad's there because his dad killed his brother. Yeah. And he's like, I can't do this from the inside. That's fair. I mean, now he's the only one left. And if his dad finds out that he's... He's got a younger brother because I was at the very end. Yeah, he does have a younger brother. But still, if he found out that he was creating a coup... He would have just killed him. he would just kill him. Sacrifice to the sun. (laughs) So yeah, he's leaving and... He's the one that rallies all the people, all the townspeople. They are like, yeah, we'll join you. We're all from different tribes. Let's work together. So now we have a sort of alliance between the Osram and the Karja small group. Small. But at the same time, uh, people are greedy and they're like, we just want to see the world burn. Yeah, so the Karja people are like, we don't trust Avad. Avad. 
Because he's sketchy. <laughs> he's one of them. And no, like, the Karja is a bod. That's the Meridian people. Oh. The Osiron. Deval. Deval. My bad. Sorry. Deval. They don't trust Deval. The Karja people don't trust Deval. As they shouldn't because he's like, sketch. He's sketch. Um, and they're like, uh, Avad's like, well, you have to trust him. Just trust me. Just then. trust me. And then um, they all had like a little party. <laughs> Now that they're all friends. Mm-hmm. Then Aaron's like, I'm going to go get some drink. He's like, where's the good booze? <laughs> so they, he heard Duval listen, or talking with that other dude that doesn't matter. <laughs> I don't know his name. He's he, a lady. He has a little lackey. And she gets taken at the end. And so they're, uh, they're chatting. Talking. And Duval's like, you know, I'm going to kill every Karja I see and then light the place on fire. And kill all the family members, including that prince guy we just met, Avad. And uh, Erin hears this and he's like, I gotta tell my sister. So he goes goes and talks to his sister, but his sister and Avad are talking to... The the Karja guy that's in the day tower? Yeah. Starts with a B. There's just too many names. There's so many people. (laughs) It's hard for us to remember all the tribes, but um, he is actually in the game. Because he's at the day tower. I like how I know where he is, but I don't know his name is. Like, Bal- Balin? Balan? Oh, yeah. This was this was the moment. So he found out that Duval was going to burn down the capital and kill Ricarja. So he was going to tell his sister. And then his sister, Avad, and the general guy at the day tower. I think his name's Balin. But... Uh, was like, hey, I don't trust Duval. And then Avad's like, you have to trust Duval because you have to trust me. And then Aaron's in the background being like, um, guys. I have to talk to you. And then after that conversation happened, he finally tells his sister. And his sister's like, all right, I got it. I got it. I'll take care of it. I'll take care of Duval. He does Duval dirty, though. Screw Duval, though. <laughs> <laughs> so you see Listen. you see a part of the story. And then at the end, you see the second part of that story of what happens. And you're like pretty messed up dang because right now the story is like glorifying his sister and then mm-hmm. um then at the end it shows he, you what really happened and he has to come to terms with people are full people and they do good and bad things yeah. but so she so Duval like destroyed a tower which caused a pit and so Ursa's like oh Duval, let's take a walk down memory lane as we walk up this hill to this tower and then she's like, we work so well together. But now... She, they share a drink and she pushes him into the pit. She's like, you need to cool down. <laughs> but then she's like, just wait till I get... You've been marked. Just wait till I get out of here. She's like, all right. And so they go and they free Meridian. Yeah, they go and they free Meridian. Uh, they don't need Duval because they have Petra... Which is another Osram lady who makes she's gadgets. She's the best. And she's in the game, too. So, then they're... You got some good lady characters. They're going to take Meridian, and they're succeeding. So, in between, again, in between this whole story that she's telling, we're tr- tracking down... Um, I always forget what Coral. Coral. K-O-R-L. Co- yeah. yeah, Coral. That's probably wrong. We're going to call him Coral. Coral. Yeah. Um, and so, he's, like, leading us on this trail. And so, Coral was part of the... F- Free booters. Mm-hmm. I almost said both booters, but um, and so he was like BFS with Duvall, and mm-hmm. but as soon as they kicked Duvall out, and they're like, "Hey, you can either leave or come fight with us." He's like, "Fine, I'll come fight with you." Yeah, no problem. But he, uh, during the fight, was raiding shrines mm-hmm. and just stealing money. And Aaron's like, "No one's gonna like you for doing that." And then he disappeared. Uh, Avad went to go kill his father because that's like the only way that this will all end and like no more sacrificing people and so um, he's like I have to kill my dad and then he can't do it because he's he kind hearted hesitates and she just kills him yeah she's like too slow which I think he tells you in the game but I'm not 100% on that I don't remember I feel like he did that's why you know he talks about liking her and, and you're like her romancing her and stuff but and then we find out because uh coral is missing after the fight um he goes to get his friend duvall out of the pit because duvall has been tortured this whole time yeah so we during the like present sequences Mm -hmm. right we find out that 
Coral killed a merchant, stole his goods, and then went to a trading place to go resell the goods for more money. And then um, Aloy and Aaron find him in the market and they just go attack him. And he has one of those boxes that sends machines, so Aloy has to deal with the machines that are coming in. And Aaron just tries to beat him up. And it fails horribly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Aaron's not very good at fighting. Um, so with Aloy's help, kind of, they eventually get him, like, cornered on the ground they pin him down and he's like i'm not going to jail yeah and then he pulls out a bomb and like blows himself up thinking he'd take errand with him but he doesn't because that man is but right before he blows up he's like your sister was colder than any steel yeah and Erin's like that hurt my feelings <laughs> but he's also kind of right he's right and then he flashes back to uh the same scene that we saw previously mm -hmm. where she's like kicking him down in the hole where she's kicking um Duvall down the hole and then someone else appears and it's like Duvall's nemesis. Duvall, yeah, and he's like, oh, I'm going to torture you forever now. So she, not only did she throw him down a hole, but then she also like told his nemesis was like, hey, I have something you want. That that makes a little more sense to me because I remember she pushed him down the hole the first time mm -hmm. and I was like, are you just not going to kill him? Yeah. You're just going to leave him in this hole for later? And it's like, no. no she's going to leave him in this hole to be tortured by his enemy. And that's why he hates her and wants her to die. <laughs> why would you leave any loose ends like that, though? Just kill that guy. It, it is odd considering that she threw him down the hole, but she did not hesitate to kill Sun King. Yeah, interesting. So... I don't know, maybe it's because one of her own people. That's a little different versus yeah, baby. Oseram versus Karjan. And didn't she also do something else, or is that it? I was the the two things was. Oh yeah, kill the king and, and kill the king and and then um and Aloy, Aloy's like, don't you feel better that you told me the whole truth? <laughs> yeah, now you know that both your sisters good and evil, and you've come to terms with that. Waiting, it's like at the end of like a like a cartoon. Like we learned a lesson, kids. I don't know what I learned. Uh, get over it. <laughs> Good to see people as they truly are versus as we. Oh yeah, because them. in the beginning he it was all like good stuff about. Yeah, him, he's like then, my sister's the best, and then acknowledging the bad stuff. Well, also because he's not the best, so I think no, he's not the best either. That helps with his self image as well. So. And that is Horizon Zero Dawn Liberation. Liberation. Good stuff. It's also shorter than the first one. <laughs> that is which is true. The Sunhawk, which we'll get into. And this one has major spoilers for the uh ending of the game. So if you haven't finished the ending of the game, you should do that before listening to us talk about it and or read this comic. Yes, so you definitely you're I found it helpful that I completed her side mission in the game before I read this. I didn't know anything about her. Talana? Um, mm -hmm. she has like her big thing is her dad like was the sun. So the sunhawk is the leader of the lodge, and so her dad was the sunhawk, and then he was like disgraced, and they like wiped his name out. And this is in the game, and so they also mention it in the comic as to like why she does what she does. Um, but it was a big deal to her. Um, also the fact that the lodge was like racist and sexist where they're like mm -hmm. no ladies allowed and she's like well they i killed so many things they couldn't deny me and that's why she takes you on a when you're a line she takes your your her thrush i think is what yeah, it's called it's thrush <laughs> because she's a hawk and that's a bird term i guess and um so she like is your jedi master she doesn't really teach you a whole lot she's just kind of there yeah. to help you fight she's good like, uh, I recommend doing her side quest because she's helpful at the end of the game. But I may have to get through without her, so take without what you will. Mm. She's a better fighter than Aaron. Mean. Also true. He knows it too. <laughs> Don't be mean to him. All right, the Sunhawk. All right, so this one also has a foreword um, where it talks about why they chose to not just simply do a comic of the game and then also has the world of horizon why don't you start let's just start at the beginning because i think it's all so different it's, okay yeah our story takes place a thousand years after a global cataclysm earth has been remade into a lush thriving ecosystem but with a new dominant species 
the machines. These massive animal-like robots fill the lands, oceans, and skies, serving as the guardians and enforcers of the revived natural order. New generations of humans formed into pre-industrial tribes without knowledge of the doomed civilization that precedes them, that of the old ones, us, which is what you said before. Yes. But this story... Mm. Little did they know that the threats from the ancient world persisted, the graves of which was Hades, a mysterious AI bent on wiping out all organic life, bolstered by an army of misguided zealots and corrupted machines. It launched a massive assault on humanity's largest tribe. After a desperate battle, Hades was defeated by Aloy, the greatest machine hunter of her age, and a coalition of faithful allies at the city of Meridian. Now, Talina, one of Aloy's closest confidants, a newly appointed Sunhawk of the Hunter's Lodge seeks a moment of reprise after the epic struggle. Um, so we start this adventure like the night of after the big battle, mm -hmm. and Aloy is there, and everyone's big like, party. "Good job, Yay. Aloy, you did it!" And everyone's chatting, and then she's like, "I got to go." In peace, and she just leaves the party and jumps off a building. And Tala's like, I understand. She's got things to do. And then weeks later, there's a kerfuffle-ish at the, uh, the lodge. hunter's lodge. These dudes want to take a, not like a bounty, but... There's a contract. A contract, that's what it's called. Yeah. And so one of them is a member of the lodge, but the other ones are not. And so they're considered mercenaries. So mm -hmm. to get a contract is you, basically someone pays you to kill a machine and then they, and then you're like, I did it. Um, but I guess it goes to certain people because machines are dangerous. So it depends on like what level hawk you are is what yeah. you're able to. They expect. don't want you to just die, like take too hard of contracts. But again, we get a little bit of the old school uh, sexism here because he's like, I actually have people who can hunt unlike you who just uh, sponsor women. Mm. Ew. Ew. That thrash over there is a woman. She can't hunt. They exchange words and then... Uh, Which is important because we'll see them again. That was pretty much the only important part of that. And the fact that she in her uh, Sunhawk role is kind of bored because she's yeah. doing administrative stuff and she would her rather and, hunt. Her and her hanging out doing paperwork and then machines come to the front gate and they're like, oh, finally, something to do. Yeah. And they go and fight machines. So they got put on the like King's Council to like help them and yeah. that's not what they do. That they chose poorly on that council because they're like, we just hunt and like hit things. <laughs> I'm assuming he just picked anyone who helped Aloy at that battle. To, Probably. To be his You're the top of your position. Since Aloy's not there anymore. <laughs> yes, she got out early because she knew yeah. that paperwork was coming later. <laughs> she dipped. Like, I'm not filling it out. Um, yeah, so they're fighting and then she decides to take a contract. Just because she won't feel like it. She's like, I need to get out of the city. Yeah. And finally, I I bought something, and that's what I love to do. She's uh, taking a contract for... What is she? I think it's the contract that the guy wanted. Yeah. And that's kind of far away, that contract. It's like high level, right? Yeah. And um, she gets uh, overwhelmed by too many machines. She goes by herself. Like, yeah. you gotta hunt with she other people. by herself, far away. She, like, shoves herself in the middle of a rock... Just to stab. Oh no, she. Oh no, that's yeah. Sorry, keep going. Just to stab the, the get the the thing's head into the rock so she can stab it, but it also stabs her in the gut, like leaving a gaping hole in her stomach, which is a terrible wound. Because she's also not wearing proper armor. She... Like she's like, let me show you my hot abs. Which I mean, this girl's in shape, so you do. Her you, abs girl. are hot, but they also are very exposed. Yeah, that's where your important organs are. So, uh, you should... and that's where she got stabbed. So, mm -hmm. um, she blacks out and wakes up in a cave. Somebody has tended to her wound and packed her bag full of food. So she's like, somebody wants me to leave. <laughs> um, she leaves. The cave and sees that those dudes that she said you can't do this hunting contract are out running around hunting stuff and they're just like leaving the machines there like they that's not the things that they're hunting are not what the contract for they're just like killing things and so in the game they talk about this several times if you just leave dead machines other machines will come because they're like scavengers and stuff yeah so other you machines will come and Take little him. kids will come and try to rip the machine yeah apart there's a little part. boy who like shows up and is 
taking things out of the machine. She's like, uh, don't, that's dangerous. Like, it could blow up. There could mm -hmm. be other machines. What you doing, kid? And um, while he's picking apart a machine, another machine attacks. He's like, at least it's not the man from the yeah. woods. That's the only thing we have to worry about. He's scary. And then a smoke bomb appears, and lo and behold, <laughs> it is a man in the woods. Dun, dun, dun. Not so scary looking. Yeah, he's kind of cute, actually. He's a handsome man. <laughs> he's a handsome drawing. Um, yeah, but he's like, all right, guys, come up on this rock. So he takes the little kid and the girl, the artist girl, what's her name? I'm sorry. It's Talana. Talana. Takes Talana. I have to remember that. It's going to be hard because I never hung out with her. Talana to the rock, and he's like, okay, hey, both of you just leave. Run away. Yeah. Just don't fight this fight. It's dumb. And, uh, He's complaining that she's drawing the machines here. You and your friends. She's like, they're not my friends. They're the mercenaries. She says that like uh, at least like 10 times. She's like, we're not friends. Like, ugh, I don't like them. They're not part of my group. But he's like, but they are. They're part of the lodge. And she's like, well, just the one. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't like him. Um, and of course, she's not going to leave, even though she's like hardcore injured yeah her like guts are spilling out and she's like i gotta fight this one machine i gotta protect the city safe. that i've never been to there's like there's a little boy that lives there i have to protect it <laughs> there's also like apparently a really really strong machine that's been running around that she remembers and let's i mean going back to the racist thing it's black what these machines these new machines are black metal coated oh. and i was like hmm Let's choose another color, please, because they are super, they're hunters. They're super vicious and they're hard to kill. And she's yeah. like, I've run into one before. And then do -do 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 -do. flashback with the little fuzzy thing. And we finally see Aloy. Aloy. In the past, Aloy was running around and was like, help me fight this really tough monster. And they work together to track it down and fight it. And then she uses her little device and is like, hmm, I think it needs fire. Yeah, so she knows. But there's also, so the note that I put for this book is like, Talano's got a thing about kids because we see the little boy that she's trying to save at the beginning, but then they come across this like cart and a bunch of dead people are there, but then she yeah. finds a doll and she's like, there's a kid, there's a kid. And they hear this kid screaming, this machine is chasing this kid, uh, Talano and Aloy go work together to take it out. The kid climbed up a tree and was throwing rocks at it. And uh, together they found out that it is immune to fire. Not immune. It is the opposite of immune to fire. <laughs> it's susceptible to fire. And Aloy gives her the arrows, right? Yes. The fire arrows? But she gives her like four. But then like later on, there's a whole bunch of them. I don't, yeah, so. I don't know how many arrows she gives her, but she's like, here, if you ever need it. <laughs> Foreshadowing. Back to modern times, her and, what is this guy's name? They did say it. Yes. His name the is Man in the Woods. Uh, um, Amadis? Amadis. 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 <laughs> like Amadis, Amadis. Amadis. I'm going to call him Amadis. Amadis? I don't know. It just sounds fancy. That sounds, that sounds better. Okay. I want to call him Talia so bad. And I don't know why. <laughs> is that Mass Effect? Maybe. Good old T Talana. and A here. We're going to go on an adventure. Talana. To track that machine the black armored machine which he's like okay let me help you track and she's like the best tracker out there and so she's like no bro i got this but then he's like they're walking and they get to a meadow of flowers and they're like they're the flowers that you pick up for health mm -hmm. and she's like is this why you brought me here and he's like i know but good coincidence because that was the time she's like i need to take a break yeah <laughs> i'm bleeding out and this is a long hike and it just so coincidentally is next to this giant broken manor. It was a nice house, too. Yeah, it looks fancy. And there's a symbol scribbled on it because the person that lives there was a traitor. And he's like, I don't know anything about this. Oh, wait, some whoever lived here was a traitor. Yeah, I actually know a couple things about this house. <laughs> Do you think anyone still lives there? No, absolutely not. But I don't know anything about this house. Yeah, I don't know anything about this house. <laughs> they find a dead guy next to the house. And come to, I like how he is like, that's one of your friends. And she's like, they're not my friends. Oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> she has to roll him over, apparently, to be yeah. like, he's part of the mercenary group who took that contract I told them not to take. This was a weird thing where 
she was like, you know, does anyone call this place home? I think because I thought she thought that that dead body she found was like a squatter. That's what I thought it was like. Oh, did the machine come through? Yeah. yeah. And so when he, he was like, no, I was like, how do you know, bro? Do you know anything about this house? There could be squatters there. Turns out squatter was him. Spoilers. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, so they found his friend. They followed the tracks. There's a bunch of hunters just killing stuff off for cheap shards. So, uh, yeah, so they're tracking these people, and it kind of helps that they're killing uh, grazers along the way, so it slows them down, and they can it helps them track, and then they're, like, in the woods, and they keep talking. He's like, what do you care? She's like, I have to do my job. And then they overhear arguing, and it is the guy that has the contract and the people that killed it. They're like, uh, we killed your thing and you have to pay us. And he's like, no, that's not what the contract is for. That's true. They only killed one. He told them to kill. To make it safe from it safer, all of them. But because yeah. they killed more things, that means the scavengers, more scavengers come mm -hmm. and it's not safe. So they actually made it worse. And then they get attacked. <laughs> so uh, while this argument was happening, the 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 bird the, the bird thing the the hunter the thing they're going after mm -hmm. comes and attacks them, and they jump out and attack. And they're like, let's fight together. No, that's not what they do. That no. would have been smart, but they are not smart because <laughs> they see her with that guy. Um, <laughs> Amadeus. <laughs> Amadeus. And they're like, you're a traitor. And then, this is my favorite part. <laughs> they're going to go get him. And what does he do? He grabs on. So, like, at first, he saves her. Like, because the bird's going to knock her over into the water. He saves mm -hmm. her. He pulls her up. But then when they're like, hey, there's a there's... contract on you. And then. Yeah, Amad Amadeus or whatever. He pulls her in back into the water. Yeah. And they jump. They fall off the cliff. And his reason afterwards, they are in a um, cave, like drying off. And she's like, what the heck, man? He's like, I wanted you to hear the story from me. <laughs> I, I pulled you off of cliff because I didn't want them to tell you the story. They just met and they were not very like friendly at all. Yeah. But he's like, I wanted you to hear the story from me. <laughs> so then he tells his story that he was part of the Red Raids. The ones that kidnapped the, people to yeah, sacrifice the them. the evil Sun King that we just saw the, the liberation of in the last comic. So, but he was Karja, so that makes sense, because they're the ones that, Yeah, like, he's like, I didn't know, I just kind of was doing my duty. I was young and naive, and, and then... then uh, somebody died, and I felt sad, and then this other Red Raid soldier was like, uh, get over it, dude. And so I pushed him. So I pushed him. <laughs> and then his helmet fell off, and he is in fact a she. And I kept her secret. And she kept my secret, which was, I was bearing people, mm -hmm. <laughs> says Amadeus. Amadeus, Amadeus. Uh, and then they had a little romance, and they loved each other, and it was all nice, until... The um, guy, the general guy, is a drunk, and they don't really care about people at all. Their own people or other people. So yeah. he's like, just go burn a bunch of stuff down. And they're like, but it's dangerous. And he's like, yeah, I don't care. Yeah, and then um, Amadeus yells at him. You're and, a drunk. I'm going to tell the and then kills him. <laughs> king. And then they fight, and then he accidentally kills him. And, and then, then he runs to where the general had sent, the, sent the, the guys, including the lady that he liked. And she's dead. <laughs> you only see her helmet. So she could be alive. But she's probably dead. But she's probably dead. So she's dead. I have to say on this book, and I the wrote in my notes, I got some very like Mulan vibes because when she picks up the doll after mm -hmm. the caravan, I was like, that's the doll from Mulan that Mulan like picks up. And then um, you see this fire thing and you just see it. Yeah. I mean, you saw other bodies, but you only see her helmet. And so it's like, I feel like I got the Mulan vibes. I get it. I get the vibes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now he's throwing a pity party, and she has to be like, "No, it's not you. You could be better now, you know." Like, I redeem your past myself, ish. Yeah, she tells about her father, and mm -hmm. and then um, she tells her backstory to make him feel better. Yeah. So backstory, backstory. Um, her father was a sunhawk who was like, "Let's be cool, lodge people, and in include people, right?" 
And everyone's like, no, that's a dumb idea. You need to be sacrificed. So they are put in, her and her brother are put into the ring and they're badass fighters. So they do pretty good. Mm -hmm. And then one of the creatures like goes into the crowd. And so they save the people in the crowd from the creatures, but no, they still kill them. And they erase their, all of the history about them in the Sun Lodge. So And she gets sent out, right? Yeah. And so, yeah, she's just hunting and then eventually she becomes... Because they can't deny her entry because she's like, I just killed all of these things. And yes, I'm a lady, but so what? That's her story of how she avenged her family's death in a way. Mm -hmm. So you do actually, when she becomes the Sunhawk in the game, um, she put, she re, you can go up and look at the thing. So that, she tells that story? She tells that story, yeah. So she's like, why don't you go honor that lady's death or something after we're done with this? Yeah. But first, you gotta help me kill this machine. Yeah, but first, machine. we're busy. And then that machine comes into the cave with great timing. And it's just, like, walking around. It's not, like, hunting them. No, yeah, it's just chose to come into that cave. But, but they kill they it. They kill it, and then they look up, and they're like, oh, there's a... There's another cave in this cave. Yeah, and we're in a that cave. Other cave <laughs> and that other cave has a cauldron. So cauldrons, if you have not played Horizon Zero Dawn, they are places where you like go level up and learn about creatures. But they're basically big machine making things, and there's like a mini boss in each one. But yeah, it's where the machines are made, and they're like, oh no, this cauldron is the one that makes the black machine. The terror machines. So we must block the door. Because they can't go in the... I don't, they don't have her, the magic stick thing yeah, that Aloy has, so stick. they can't go in there. So they're like, we should explode the cave and it'll fall uh, and block the cauldron. But then they hear voices in the cave and it's those dudes that, that are, are her not friend, her friends. But not her friends. <laughs> <laughs> and they're running around in the cave. But then, oh no, a giant turtle machine comes out of the water. <laughs> yeah. So there's what you think is a little island, but it's really a turtle. Turtle machine. Which is very a uh, never-ending story, but it's pretty um, cool. Yeah, but I don't remember seeing a, a turtle in the Horizon. It's been a while, and maybe, no, we maybe there was. Didn't look it up. I'm pretty sure there's not. Maybe the in Forbidden West. Okay. Maybe that will be a. I'm gonna look it up. You tell stories. That'll be a Forbidden West thing. So they're like, oh crap, there's this super like <laughs> big turtle that <laughs> like, shoots like things out of its eyes. And they're like, well, what are we going to do? And she's like, I got this. Like you just run and get the bomb to explode the cave. And then so they basically just run really fast past the people that are looking at them, who, of course, turn around when they run past them and they don't see the giant there's turtle. A, a shell snapper, but it's like a bigger one of those. Was it in the game? It looks like it is. Maybe it was. And it, so even the concept art, though. So. Oh, that is cool. I mean, it's cool looking. I don't remember it, but I mean, I don't remember. It's it been a while since I played this game, so it could very well be there. But I think it is. It's like running super fast too, which turtles do not move very fast. And so it's like fighting the not friends, friends, and but yet they're still trying to fight to get him because they want the contract. So they're fighting the turtle and trying to fight her so that they can get to him mm -hmm. and then he's trying to get the bomb to explode the, the to close the cave and um then she's like oh it's got a shell and it's none of these arrows are working on it it's like new duh <laughs> it's a shell like it's a tur i guess they don't have turtles so they wouldn't know yeah but isn't it like every time they hit the turtle shell his like eyes light up or something something like that it's like something's gonna happen and then um, he, like, steps on people, which is pretty cool. Um, she, like, has him go underwater. Yeah, because she was going to, she's like, I think I can make this like, turtle explode. Yeah, it's like, like getting a charge or something like that. Which is bad to put him in the water, but it's getting, yeah, that... I was confused by that. But I guess because the electricity is coming, like, maybe out uh, of the shell and not into the water. Well, because then you, you wouldn't it explode the turtle, too, if it was electrocute the turtle if it was in the water. You'd think, but I don't know how um, these machines work. Anyway, he planted the explosives. She was going to go plant the explosives, but then he, like, pushed her back. And mm -hmm. then um, she's like, wait, I have an idea. Get in the water. And then she shoots the turtle, and the turtle explodes in, in the lightning way. It's still alive. Mm-hmm. 
but it shoots out all of its electricity, which does not affect the water <laughs> the guy's in. And he makes it to the other side, and he goes and blows up the cave to cover the cauldron. And then they, there's still the turtle. The turtle's still there. The turtle's still there. She's like, I have an idea, because nothing I'm doing is working. And so she's going to go run to get the turtle close to the cave when it explodes she's like if the turtle will explode mm -hmm. which is smart i mean yeah, that makes sense but she's too slow because he was quick fast at that so he's running out while she's running in and so he like pushes her under the water and we get a nice little romantic uh, almost kiss picture almost. um and then she's she's like oh wait i know what to do <laughs> and she can kill the turtle which um she goes underneath the turtle and just like pokes at the bottom of yeah it. guts its belly yeah. open because that's how turtles work and the turtle <laughs> the whole crushes the the like the turtle. yeah and they are the winners and then they go back to his house and he's like thank you you have given me <laughs> Can't. what where he's like you've given me hope for the future or whatever he says um he picks her up a flower and i want you to know you you've made me believe that maybe i'm not the scoundrel i thought i was there might be more to life than hiding in the shadow of the past she's like there's a lot more and that's why there this is where we have to part ways. <laughs> they got all romantic there for yeah. a second. He's like, and that's where we end this. Yep. So he's going to go back to where I'm his going back to the died. Forbidden West. Does that mean he's in the West? game? That's what I'm wondering because I haven't played it enough. And he might be in that game because at the end of this comic, it says that um, uh, T Talana's story will continue on Horizon Forbidden West. Yeah. Maybe she goes and joins him. So Maybe. he's going to um bury his girlfriend's body. But the question that I asked was, how is he supposed to find it? It's been a long time. <laughs> True, it's been a long. I feel like he's just going there as a spiritual quest, mm. and he'll be he'll feel better once he's over there. But we might see him in Forbidden West. I don't know, but we'll maybe see her. I we guess. will see her. She's in it. I know that. Yeah. Yeah. Is she gonna go to find him? Maybe because she's like, please write me when you get there. I like how in Horizon, so Horizon takes place in like Colorado, yeah, like Ohio, like, yeah, like, like Utah, something like that. Um, and like none of the people have like left they're like this is our place this is where we're at and then all of a sudden forbidden west it's like let's go to let's, california um, they all <laughs> want to hang out with aloy yeah. who's going there for a mission and they're like oh i guess we can go there too he's like i just want to be alone yeah leave me alone guys <laughs> god <laughs> they're my friends though i have to help them all the time all the time you guys are causing a liability problem <laughs> And that is Horizon Zero Dawn, the first two comics. Hopefully there will be more. They were very good. enjoyable. I would, Great I artwork. I want to read more. So especially stuff. with uh, Forbidden West out now. Yes. Um, maybe we can get some more side stories. You, the um, Petra, that's the side story I want. Because that, that lady was a badass. She's in Forbidden West, too. I saw her. <laughs> Tide Quest comic. All about Petra. Let's, Let's go. Let's do it. All right, next month we are reading Blood, Sweat, and Pixels mm -hmm. by Jason Schreier. Did I get that title right? Yes. Okay, Blood, Sweat, and Pixels. Yes. Okay. He's got two books out. So um, that is the first one. It is about the video game industry. Yeah. So we're going to go a little different fiction and get some behind the scenes info. Hopefully, it doesn't tell us how. I'm, I have a feeling it's going to tell us how awful the video game industry is. But we enjoy games so much. So please keep it going. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm amazed games get made all the time. Yeah. Every time I learn about them, I'm like, dang, how do, how do you guys do it? It's amazing. So join us uh, next time for Blood, Sweat, and Pixels. Bye. Bye.